In this podcast, I'd like to focus actually on this side of the screen, the concept of biological constraints, sometimes called biological preparedness, most often called biological preparedness. So basically the idea that learning is adaptive, all learning is adaptive, it helps us to survive, and that biology can actually constrain, limit um, what organisms can learn and um, cannot learn. So we talked about Garcia and colon and, t- colon and taste aversion studies, challenges to classical conditions, classical conditioning, but we didn't spend a lot of time on challenges to operant conditioning. And Myers does mention it in the unit. He talks about this concept called instinctual drift. Now remember, I'm going relatively fast, so pause me if you want to write things down and then unpause me to hear me uh, continue through with this. So basically what happened in um, operant conditioning as Skinner's students went on to expand his work, they noticed that sometimes there was either a failure to learn that some animals couldn't actually um, seem to make the connection between their behavior and the reinforcement they received, like so the behavior was not increased, or that it didn't happen at all. And one of the culprits in this is called instinctual drift. And it's the idea that animals have, some animals have genetically, we would call them instincts or tendencies um, that they return to despite the conditioning process, okay? And this will interfere, this interferes with the learning. So let's uh, meet two of their, uh, two of Skinner's students. The Brelands, a married couple that actually went on to become animal trainers uh, in, uh, they worked in movies, circuses, and one of the cool studies they did was they were trying to train raccoons to actually put a coin in a piggy bank. And when the um, raccoon put the coin in the piggy bank, actually deposited it, they would get positively reinforced with food. It seemed to be working. And then Something interesting happened. I'm going to kind of abbreviate this because there were a few things that actually happened. I'm going to oversimplify it. But in the wild, raccoons have the tendency, in this little picture here, if water is available, to actually rub their food, uh, uh, rub their food back and forth in their hands um, and to dunk it in water. So they rub and they dunk, they rub and they dunk, and then they eat eventually. And what started happening is when they gave them more than one coin, they started rubbing the coins together instead of putting them into the, into the piggy bank to get reinforcement. And the Brelands were kind of wondering what's going on here. They seem to have learned that if they put the coins in the piggy bank, that they will get a reward. Instead, they're just simply reverting back to this kind of rubbing behavior. Not only that, they started dipping it, they started dipping the coins into the opening slot of the piggy bank, but not depositing them, almost as if it was water, right? Where they don't let the food go in the water. So basically, they assumed that, they inferred that the conditioning process was being inhibited by this natural biological response. The raccoon was was basically drifting back to some of these instincts or habits that raccoons have, right? So here's the kind of the the takeaway. What the Brelands realized was, wait, we've been making these assumptions, and here are the assumptions right here. Some of these we learned in class. Tabula rasa means blank slate in Latin. And basically, Skinner believed that almost all animals were the same. They came in as blank slates. Remember, cognition doesn't matter, right? And so, therefore, they basically minimized and diminished the differences between species. They basically said, oh, those differences are insignificant. They don't really matter much because all responses are equal, are equally able to be conditioned to any stimulus. Ah, however, what the Brelands basically said was, we need to take into consideration this. Biology, basically, please read through these, but the, the, the long and short of it is that biology matters, and biology can constrain the conditioning process. So that's how bio, one instance of how biology actually makes operant conditioning very difficult, if not impossible, in certain instances.